Well, I've talked about the museum. I've talked about the flowers. I guess we're going to have to talk about Andrew Lloyd Webber. Now, Mary, I want to tell you that for the first time in 26 years, I am talking about a person who is living and breathing tonight. <laughs> so Andrew Lloyd Webber is in his baronial castle in England sleeping, and he is alive. So all of the music you're going to hear is by a real person who is still living. Isn't that marvelous? Now, Andrew Lloyd Webber is this magician. He truly is a magician. He's taken musical theater, and he's cast it all over the world. This guy is 69 years old, and he has taken over the musical theater industry. Because not only does he write beautiful melodies, the melodies are so gorgeous. They shape you, they give you emotion, they're rhythmically very interesting. But not only does he write the music, but he also controls the production. Is he an innovator who has challenged how we view the musical? Absolutely. Is he a person who has taken musical theater and made it into a spectacle? Have any of you seen Phantom of the Opera? OK. So when I saw Phantom of the Opera, I saw all this incredible stagecraft. You know, there was smoke, there were lights, there was all this motion. You felt that you were in the Paris Opera. You really were there, because he had captured your imagination, taken you to places you would never go before. He is the god of entertainment. You are entertained completely so that you don't even know that your heart is beating or your lungs are breathing because you are just filled with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Or the dialogue by people he's gotten to write his scripts, the lyrics to his songs. And then he's made this huge production that he's in control of. So I want you to think about whiz kids, because Andrew Lloyd Webber was a whiz kid. So imagine that he's, what, eight or nine years old, this young man? So he was already thoroughly classically trained. His father had taught him how to write music. His mother had taught him how to play music. He was very interested in studying music. So this little boy began composing when he was like just nine years old. By the time he was 12, he'd written his first suite of six pieces. He was just the most brilliant boy. He was a Queen's Scholar at Westminster School, which has the highest acceptance rate of any colleges for Oxford and Cambridge. So he was one of those whiz kids. He wanted to be the sort of lord of antiquities. He loved old buildings, old monuments. Everything old was Andrew Lloyd Webber. So this boy is a whiz kid. Now the thing you have to remember is he was learning music, listening to music, studying literature, reading poetry when he was just a wee lad. And I imagine his parents read to him when he was even not able to remember what they'd read to him. So he was this super brain filled with information about sound, about light, about everything. So this little boy wrote nine musicals. A song cycle, just like Schubert or Bach. or He set a set of variations he wrote for his brother, two film scores, and a beautiful Latin rec no, sorry, requiem mass. Now, when it comes to Irving Berlin, the way he comes to be is Irving Berlin was a phenomenal businessman, as is Andrew Lloyd Webber. And Dick Rogers was also equally as profound with business as he was with composing the music. And Cole Porter is very much like Andrew Lloyd Webber because he had that sound. He was, you know, he was a person who borrowed melodies, who borrowed things. Andrew Lloyd Webber has been sued twice. One time he lost and settled out of court, so we don't know how much the people got. The other one, he won, so he had to pay nothing to who to accuse him of plagiarizing their music. So he's most, to me, like George Gershwin, because G Gershwin became famous in 1924 because he could combine classical music with jazz, with American popular music, the Tin Pan Alley music. Well, Andrew Lloyd Webber has taken it farther. You know, he's combined classical, pop, rock, and almost everything else. Any type of music you can think of, Andrew Lloyd Webber uses. Now, both composed lots of music on the piano. George Gershwin said, 
composers should not play, should not compose at the piano because they will be limited by their technique. So Gershwin was a great pianist. He was not limited by his technique, and he learned to sit at a desk and write music. Andrew Lloyd Webber, I think, I think that Andrew Lloyd Webber does this. Now that he is very famous, he can sit on his bench, have the piano in front of him. I would imagine he improvises beautifully, as did Gershwin. And everything that comes out of his piano is recorded. And it's recorded so they can go back and say, hmm, this is a beautiful melody here. Let's skip this and go to this. And they can reharmonize it and orchestrate it, and all of a sudden push a button, it gets printed out, and it's sung on stage. So they're quite similar, but Andrew Lloyd Webber can go much farther. <laughs>